Hey, good morning, students. So, in the last class, we were discussing problems based on uh, R is equal to rho L by rho L by A, and that too based on um, integration method. Like when area of cross section is variable or the resistivity of the material is variable. So, some more problems are there based on that uh, expression. So, let us see those problems. So, then. Uh, <coughs> the resistivity conductivity of the material is varying here suppose I am taking a cylindrical conductor like this. So, cylindrical conductor of uh, area of cross section A and this length L I am taking here. Now, the conductivity of this material varies with the distance x as where x is defined like this along its length. So, that uh, this is uh, conductivity of the material is uh, sigma naught into L by root x right. So, I am taking this conductivity of the material is varying according to this equation. Then uh, we need to find resistance of this material and if suppose some potential difference say V naught is applied across this, we need to find the uh, say current density and electric field. So, write that problem. The conductivity, the conductivity of a conductor of a cylindrical conductor of a cylindrical conductor of area of cross section A and length L length L varies with the distance x from one end from one end as right this sigma is equal to sigma naught into L by root x sigma is equal to sigma naught into L by root x. Find a resistance of this conductor, find the resistance of this conductor. Next question in that, if V naught is the potential difference applied across its ends, if V naught is the potential difference applied across its ends, Then find current density, current density and intensity of electric field, intensity of electric field at any point inside the conductor, at any point inside the conductor. So, first let us see the resistance calculation. If resistance uh, we calculated, the remaining we can solve them easily. So, then here I am taking this element here when it is at a distance of x. So, here I am taking this element uh, like this. That means this element is in the form of uh, a circular disc because we are cutting a small element of this cylinder. So, this at a distance of x and this width I am taking as dx here. So, let us write resistance here. Now, current is flowing along this direction here. Some current I is flowing along the direction, right. So, for the small element I am writing here, for small element, the resistance I can write as dr is equal to rho into, now dl. dl means the length through which current is entering. So, it is crossing only length of dx here. So, dx by this uh, pi r square that pi r square is nothing but uh, area A is given. So, directly I am substituting that area A because area is same for every element here right. And here next this uh, instead of this resistivity conductivity is given. So, we can write this as uh, dx by sigma into A we can write. So, this rho I am writing as 1 by sigma. So, let us substitute the sigma value there. Therefore, this dr is equal to dx by a into that sigma is nothing but uh, sigma naught into L by root x. Therefore, finally this dr is equal to root x into dx by sigma naught into a into L. To get the total resistance just we need to uh, integrate this. Therefore, r is equal to 1 by sigma naught into a into L integral of this x power 1 by 2 dx. Now, the x value varies from 0 to L because from one end to other end we need to integrate here. And so, x power n formula simply 
So you can write this as uh, R is equal to 1 by sigma naught into A into L and this is uh, x power 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 we can write x power n formula 0 to L right and so therefore I can write this as uh, 2 by 2 L power 3 by 2 by and this value we can write it as 3 into sigma naught into A into L and L you can simplify there therefore finally that resistance of that material I can write this as 2 into root L by 3 into sigma naught into A we can write. So this is the now uh, say resistance of that uh, material right and next they are applying a potential difference of V naught therefore by Ohm's law we can write the current. So by Ohm's law I can write this I is equal to V by R. So this is V naught by that R means V naught we need to substitute this 2 into root uh, L by this is 3 into sigma naught into A. Therefore finally I can write this as uh, 3 V naught into sigma naught into A by 2 into root L, right? And so next here, uh, uh, let us say this, this is the current here. Now we need to write current density. So current density is nothing but, so we, we can define that current density as, we know the definition of this current density. So current density J is equal to I by A. So then current per unit area is nothing but our current density here. So then uh, its value will be like J is equal to I by A. This A value simply we can write this side. So you can write this as 3V naught into sigma by 2 into root L, right? So this is a current density which is a constant value. So that current density is now independent of uh, uh, position we can write. At any point it will be uniform throughout the cross section of this conductor there, right? And next here they are asking about electric field, electric field at any point inside the conductor. So here if you don't confuse with that, previously in electrostatics we mentioned that electric field at any point inside the conductor will be zero, right? So that is in electrostatics, in electrostatics that means where there is no flow of any charges, electric field inside the conductor will be zero. But whenever current is flowing through the conductor, electric field inside the conductor should not be zero because here you know and the uh, when we were discussing about uh, drift velocity we discussed already because of this electric field only the electrons are present in that inside the material are accelerating right and so whenever current is flowing to the conductor electric field must be present inside the conductor so you should not answer it as zero with the knowledge of electrostatics so don't confuse with that in electrostatics that means where there is no flow of charges or where the charges are at rest the inside the conductor electric field must be zero but in current electricity where the current is flowing so whenever current is flowing through the conductor electric field inside the conductor should not be zero there will be some finite electric field inside the conductor is it clear so remember this point don't confuse with those both the statements there and so now let us write this uh, electric field here I will write here so the electric field I can write this as So here to write this electric field, uh, simply I will remind one relation here. We know the relation between electric field and the density, current density. So we know electric field E bar is equal to, or let us write magnitude here, E is equal to like rho into J, right? Or I can write this as E is equal to J by sigma we can write, because here we know the sigma value here instead of this rho and therefore I can write this as, so simply you can substitute those values here, we know the J value and we know the sigma value also. So J value is nothing but 3 V naught into sigma naught by 2 into root L, right? Now this sigma value we need to write, so this sigma value is nothing but sigma naught into L by root X, this is our sigma value, right? And so that sigma naught and sigma naught we can cancel. Therefore, this electric field I can write this as 3V naught into root x by 
2 into this value will be I can write this as L root L or L power 3 by 2 you can write and so this will be the electric field here at a distance of x from this conductor x from this one end so now here you can observe this electric field inside this conductor is now variable in this problem so it is varying with the distance x here right so that is a way of calculating here so when you are, when i am discussing this relation there i mentioned that in the electric field inside the conductor calculations generally we need to use this relation here either e is equal to rho into j or we can use this as uh, uh, e into sigma actually e into sigma is equal to j as e is required here required quantity i am writing the sigma this side there so right so that is a calculation of this electric field here and next let us see one more problem here for the same conductor uh, we need to calculate the resistance of the conductor in different directions you will get the different expressions there So I am taking this one fourth of a annulus disc. So diagram, I should get some clarity here. This is I am taking like this. So to get this clarity, so this is uh, the uh, this is the annulus uh, disc here, one fourth of the uh, annulus disc of inner radius A and outer radius B, and having some thickness uh, rho. Sorry, having thickness thickness H, and rho is the resistivity of this material. So when current is flowing along the different directions like this, when it is flowing along x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, we need to find the resistance of this so write that write that problem a conducting medium a conducting medium in the form of quarter of annulus quarter of annulus having inner radii A and outer radii B comma thickness H is as shown in figure is as shown in figure if rho is if sigma is the conductivity of the material if sigma is the conductivity of the material then find resistance of the medium find resistance of the medium when current is flowing along x axis y axis and along z axis here so remember here x is radial along the radial direction and y is along the circumference y is lying in the plane of the disc here like this along the circumference of this uh, disc and z is perpendicular to that plane there so if you want to may mention that clarity x is along radial y is along the circumference along the plane of the disc and z is perpendicular to the plane of the disc right so that means it's a uh, in the form of a uh, thick material here having some thickness when current is playing along those directions we need to answer uh, resistance there right and so that uh, uh, we are taking some thick material uh, like this in the form of a disc here so you can calculate easily when current is flowing along the z axis right because no variable is there when current is flowing along the z axis just when when you are applying potential difference between inner and out, uh, top surface bottom surface and top surface current will flow from inner surface to outer surface so directly you can write the uh, resistance of such a medium when current is flowing along the z direction there so for x and y only we need to take some elements method there so by taking small elements we need to answer about this uh, x and y right 
So first of all, I am writing about this x direction when current is flowing along the x axis. So when I, that means current is along x axis, right? When current is along the x axis, that means when current is flowing, with, uh, when you are applying the potential difference between inner and outer uh, radii, inner and outer surface. So then current flows from inner to outer surface, that is our x direction here, radially, current will flow radially, so right? So for that we need to take one element here. So I am taking small element here. So with the radius r, I am taking this small element here, right? So this is the element what I am getting there. That means actually we need to take it as a small element and uh, some width dr also we need to consider here. So I am taking like this. Right. So now our element is this one. So this also I am drawing it as a continuous line. So now this is our element here, current is flowing along this direction here, it is entering here and it will comes out here, right? That means our element will be like this, if this is the thickness h, this thickness is h if you are considering, then our element will be like this. This current is entering here and it is coming out here, this thickness is h, that you should remember, current is flowing along the radial direction. So this radius we are taking as r, this element we are for this element, the radius as r I am taking. Do you got the clarity about this element? So our element we are taking like this, if annular disk is like this, this is the thickness h, so in that we are cutting this small element here, if you cut a small element like this, then you will get like this, this is a radius is r, this thickness is h and this is dr here, so current is flowing along this radial direction, got it? Now we need to apply this rho l by a formula for this, so rho l means it is dr, current is flowing through a length of dr area means then this area we need to write here, this area we need to write, area is entering through this area, so right, this area we can write as this length into and this uh, height we need to write here, this height is nothing but h and this length we need to write there, got it? And so then that I can write this as, now for small element dr is equal to rho means it is 1 by sigma, conductivity is given there, into dr by, uh, that area of cross section we need to write. So area of cross section is nothing but, I can write this as, the length of this part we need to write here, the length of this part is nothing but, I can write this as, pi r by 2, into h. Got the clarity about this, why I am taking pi r by h, pi r by 2, this length we need to write here, this length into this height we need to write. So this length is nothing but it is a one fourth of the circle you will get because this annular disc itself is one fourth of the disc here and so this is one fourth of the circle means total circle is 2 pi r, so then its uh, circumference is nothing but 2 pi r by 4, so that means pi r by 2. So this length into this area, that means if I am taking an element like this, then uh, this length is we are getting it as uh, pi r by 2 and this height, so then you will get this area here, right? So then uh, you can simplify this, therefore this dr is equal to, I can write this as uh, 2 into dr by sigma into pi into h into r, so therefore this r is equal to 2 by sigma into pi into h is a constant, then integral of dr by r we can write. Now the r varies from, r is nothing but radial distance only, r varies from a to b. So you can take the limits as from a to b. So the resistance along the x direction that I am taking as x, so then I can write this as 2 by sigma into pi into h into ln b by a, got it? So that is the resistance along the direction, when current is flowing along the radial direction, 
the resistance of the material is given by this uh, expression. Next let us say when it is flowing along the y axis. So this is the first part of the problem here. So the second part is uh, when current is along y axis. Y axis means along the disc, along the circumference of the disc. So when you are applying potential difference between this end and this end, then current will flow along this. Now for this also we need to take the same element only but the direction of the flow of the current will be different so here again i am taking the same element here right this element only i am taking here but now here you should remember that current is entering from this side so here current is flowing along this direction here for this hello when you are calculating along this y axis so i am taking the same element only when current is flowing along x direction means current is entering like this right when current is flowing from one end to other end of the annular disk means current for the same element current is entering here. So that means now let us take the same element but just we need to write current is flowing along this direction right. So when current is flowing along this direction when you are applying this rho L by A formula L means this total length we need to write. The total length is nothing but pi R by 2 length through which that means current is traveling from here to here it will comes out here. So that means this total length we need to write and area of cross section means this area of cross section we need to write. That area of cross section is nothing but width is dr and this height we are taking as h. So h into dr we need to write. Got it? How to apply for the small element? So then I can write this as again I am writing for small element. So for that small element uh, dr is equal to then sigma we need to write here then length is pi r by 2 by sigma into area. So listen this area clearly h into this length we need to write here that means here our element area will be like this. This is our dr here this thickness is dr and this length is h. So current is entering through that area there. So h into dr we need to write. Got it? And so now let us simplify this. So therefore dr is equal to pi r by 2 into sigma into h into dr. Now again observe this dr is there in our denominator. So when dr is there in denominator how to solve that? You can't integrate this directly. When dr is there in denominator we should reverse the fraction. So what actually means is all these elements will be in parallel when you are applying potential difference between these two all those elements will be in parallel we need we are dividing the element like this all those elements will be in parallel so then we need to uh, reverse the fraction and then we should apply this that means 1 by r is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 and so on like that we need to calculate the resistance there so that means 1 by r is equal to integral of 1 by dr we need to write so which I can express this as this is resistance along the y axis there. So you can reverse this 2 sigma h into dr by pi into r. So 1 by r y is equal to 2 sigma h by pi is a constant then integral of dr by r and again the limits are varying from a to b r limits therefore this r y by sorry 1 by r y is equal to this is 1 by r y 1 by r y is equal to I can write this as 2 sigma h by pi into ln b by a so then uh, to find the r y value we need to reverse the fraction then therefore r y is equal to I can write this as pi by 2 sigma h into ln b by a now this ln b by a is in denominator so this is the resistance uh, when you are writing for this uh, when the current is flowing along the circumference of the disk. So got it. So for the same element the direction of flow of current will be uh, along the different directions when you are flowing along the radial and when the current is when you are taking this along the circumference and accordingly the area and length of those elements are changing and just we need to observe this uh, length and area of cross sections there right. So for the same element we are writing there. So that is along x and y directions. And next let us consider about the z direction.
So about the z direction means we are applying a potential difference between the bottom and the top surface of this uh, conductor there, right? So when you are applying between the bottom and the top, then uh, nothing is variable. Every element will have the same potential difference, same length and same area of cross section. So we can apply the formula directly there. Our potential difference between top and bottom. So when I is along the z axis, this is our uh, third case. when i is along z axis so i can write this as r z is equal to rho into l l means length through which that current is flowing so you can observe this current is flowing from bottom to top bottom surface area to top surface area so how much length it is traveling it is traveling a length of thickness of this plate which is nothing but h so then it is h by area through how much area current is flowing through the entire area of this disk here uh, one fourth of the disk so that is nothing but pi into b square minus a square by 4 because it is a one fourth of the total uh, annulus disk there and so then i can write this as therefore this rz is equal to 4 into rho into h by pi into b square minus a square you can write so these are resistance along the z axis got it so that is a uh, for the same medium the resistance will depend on the direction of flow also and so that is a uh, direction of the basing on the direction of flow of the current that is the resistance calculations for the same medium right and so those are some problems based on this uh, uh, rho l by a and some more problems are based on this uh, some more problems are there based on the topics which we discussed till now basing on like uh, electric field calculations or flux calculation problems are also there basing on this so let us see some problems related to the telecostatics and current electricity And here one problem is there basing on the drift velocity which is a very simple problem and important also. And first write that problem basing on drift velocity calculation or drift velocity formula and it is the previous mains question also. So write that uh, when current is flowing through a conductor of length L, when current is flowing through a conductor of length L, when current I when current I is flowing through a conductor of length L, find net momentum of all the electrons, net momentum of all the electrons, net momentum of all the electrons. In brackets, right? Small m is the mass of electron. E is the charge of the electron. All the electrons in the sense we are discussing about conduction electrons only, not the electrons involved in the bonding. So only about the free electrons we are discussing there, right? And so now here momentum we need to calculate. So momentum of all the electrons we need to calculate there, right? So momentum of one electron I am writing here for example. So momentum of one electron. So momentum of one electron we can write this as so momentum of one electron mass of electron into its velocity its velocity is nothing but generally we consider it as a drift velocity right so i am taking it as vd so m into vd then momentum of all electrons means momentum of all electrons so that is our total momentum number of electrons into this momentum of one electron we need to write because we assume a general model of this atom all the electrons will accelerate opposite to the direction of electric field such an assumption we are taking here and so that uh, this total momentum I can write this as the total number of electrons we need to write the total number of electrons I can write as n into this is small n is the number of electrons per unit volume into 
volume of this element we need to write. So volume of element means A into L I am writing. This is capital N. Right? And so then this value we can write as M into VD. Momentum of one electron. Got it? One momentum of one electron into total number of electrons we are writing here. The total number of electrons I can write as N is the number of electrons per unit volume which we already used in the triple velocity calculation into A into L. A into L will give us a volume so that it gives a total number of electrons there. And so then this is equal to N into A into L into M into VD. This VD means we know the drift velocity formula. We can substitute the drift velocity formula. I can write this as I by NAE. Right? We know the drift velocity and current relation. So drift velocity we can write as I by NAE. Where N is number of electrons per unit volume. A is area of cross section and E is the charge of the electron. And therefore this can be written as this N will be cancelled and A will be cancelled. So finally I can write this as I into M into L by E. So that is the momentum of all electrons. They will give the numericals. They will give some I value and L value. You can substitute in those expressions there. Right? So that is uh, momentum calculations, momentum of electrons in calculation. It's a previous mains question only. And next year, uh, one more question is there like this. So like two conducting materials are joined here having different uh, say conductivities. And suppose say I is the current flowing through this arrangement here. So these are the two materials having say same area of cross section A. Area of cross section is same for both of them. And this uh, uh, sigma, sigma is a conductivity of the material. So they are having the different uh, conductivities there. So A in sigma 1. And this also area of cross section A and sigma 2. So that is the information there. Now we need to calculate that how much charge is developed across the junction. So at the junction, how much charge is developed there? So write that problem. Two conductors of same area of cross section A. Two conductors of same area of cross section A. Or join. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. Join as shown in figure. Sigma 1 and Sigma 2, Sigma 1 and Sigma 2 be the conductivities, be the conductivities of those rods. Let I is a current flowing through that combination. Let I is a current flowing through that combination. Then find then find charge developed across the junction. Then find charge developed across the junction. So in the same problem, sometimes instead of charge, they will ask what is the flux, net flux passing through the junction. So if you know the flux, then we can calculate the charge or if you know the charge, we can calculate the flux. So then here there. That means some charge will accumulate at the junctions there when you are joining such a different materials there. So we need to find that uh, how much charge accumulates at the junction. So basically what we can write is both are having same area of cross section and so then current I is flowing to them. So current density will be same, right? So I can write this as uh, current density J is equal to that means I by A. Right? So as I and area of cross sections are same, I can write this as J1 is equal to J2. Current densities in both the materials will be same. So now, but this E is equal to or E into sigma is equal to J. Right? We know already this relation. E is the electric field, sigma is the conductivity and J is the current density. So therefore, I can write this relation as E1 into sigma 1 is equal to E2 into sigma 2. This is equal to our current density J, whether J1 or J2, right? And so now here, 
this is one relation here suppose i am finding this e2 value from this so e2 is equal to, i can write this as e1 into sigma 1 by sigma 2 we can write and so now here i am writing the net flux net flux passing through the, the junction net flux through the junction So net flux through the junction I can write this as so that I can write this as uh, some E1 into A minus E2 into A. Here electric fields in the both the materials will be in the same direction that will be say in the direction of this current. So E1 is along this direction and E2 is along this direction here. So at this junction current entering is uh, sorry flux entering is E1 into A and flux leaving is E2 into A right. And so then uh, net flux is nothing but flux entering minus flux leaving I am writing here. So E1 into A minus E2 into A I am writing here. That is the net flux uh, through the junction. And just we apply the Gauss law here. So by Gauss law. So by Gauss law I can write this as integral of uh, E bar dot ds bar is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed Q in right and so now this flux we already calculated here so I can write this as E1 minus E2 into A is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed and therefore from this we can calculate the charge enclosed therefore this will be E1 minus E2 that E2 value now we can substitute from this. So I am substituting from this equation here that E1 value I am eliminating that. So I can write this as E1 minus E1 into sigma 1 by sigma 2 into A into epsilon naught. This epsilon naught also we are writing this side. So let us take this E1 common then sigma 2 minus sigma 1 by sigma 2 into E1 into A into epsilon naught, right? And so now that is, uh, so this, uh, let us keep in this, we need to convert finally in terms of this, uh, in terms of the I value here because E1 is not there. So just I am taking this expression like this, let us keep like this only. Because finally we need to write in terms of I only because E1 and E2 values are not given here. The given information is only I, A and sigma, right? So just I am keeping this expression like this. Next here what we can do is I am taking that sigma common here. So when you are taking that sigma common, see this Q is equal to 1 by sigma 1 minus 1 by sigma 2 into sigma 1 into E1 into A into epsilon naught. Got it? From this expression, I am taking the sigma naught common. And so this I can write this as Q in is equal to 1 by sigma 1 minus 1 by sigma 2 into the sigma 1 into J1, uh, sigma 1 into E1 is nothing but you can observe here that is J, current density. So I can write this as J into A into epsilon naught. Got it? Now this we know that but that gives us I value current and so I can write this as therefore charge enclosed is equal to 1 by sigma 1 minus 1 by sigma 2 into I into epsilon naught. So this is the charge enclosed at this uh, charge developed or accumulated at the junction there when two different materials are joined together. So sometimes here instead of asking the charge they may ask the flux. If they ask flux, simply we write this uh, epsilon naught this side. Q by epsilon naught is nothing but our flux there. So then 1 by sigma 1 minus 1 by 2 sigma 2 into I we can write there. So that is a simple um, uh, charge enclosed at the junction calculation. That means it is a combination of uh, current density and this Gauss law there. So that means in conductors, when different conductors are joined together, then Gauss law we apply like that. Got it? And next term.
And let us see some more problems based on the combination of electrostatics and this current electricity. Like here I am taking this, uh, uh, this is a cylindrical uh, conductor, it is a very long cylindrical conductor. Having say suppose a radius R, and I am taking this as a radius A, right? And having this surface that means uh, charge density lambda, uniform charge density lambda. Now it is moving with the velocity V naught along its direction, along its length. So we need to find the current flowing due to that uh, uh, moment of the cylindrical rod in its path. So write that problem. A long cylindrical, a long cylindrical rod of radius A, radius A having linear charge density lambda, linear charge density lambda is moving with the constant velocity v naught moving with the constant velocity v naught along its length along its length then find current flowing in that path due to the moment of the cylinder current flowing in that, in that path due to the moment of the cylinder. Right? So just here, uh, uh, I know, uh, we know the electric field formula here, electric field on the surface of this uh, conductor, suppose I am writing here. So the electric field, we can write it as uh, lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught or we can write r means here a I am taking here right that is at a point just outside this uh, conductor we can consider here since we are assuming this length of the rod is uh, very large right now here I am taking this small element here suppose I am taking this small element of this rod here say let us say it is a dx here right I am taking one element, I am discussing about that one element of this conductor now, right. And so now charge present on that conductor I can write as dq is equal to lambda into dx we can write, that is the charge present on that uh, conductor. And so now here uh, that element is moving with the velocity v naught we can consider there, right. So that means we are taking this entire rod is moving here, when that entire rod is moving I can consider it. Uh, that element is more that element is moving with the velocity v naught I can write and so that I can write this expression as uh, current expression as dq by dt I can write and actually from this yeah dq by dt we can write and so now here I can write this as uh, lambda into dx by dt right and therefore this is lambda into this dx by dt is nothing but velocity of this rod you will get. So, lambda into v naught that gives the current flowing in that path there, right. So, if lambda is given directly we can find this current flowing in that path like this. So, in some cases lambda instead of lambda they will give the electric field there. So, let us write in terms of electric field. So, for that actually we need to write this expression. So, I mentioned in the beginning there. So, if E is given as in our problem I gave the lambda as the surface charge density if lambda is given then our problem is over here with this lambda into v naught is nothing but the current flowing in that path we can answer got it now what I am saying is instead of giving the linear charge density they will give the surface uh, electric field on the surface of the conductor there so that problem now I am explaining here if E is given as uh, electric field electric field 
on the surface of conductor then this e value we can write as lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught a right so just from this we calculate this lambda value here so 2 pi epsilon naught into e into a got it now just we substitute that lambda value here then you will get answer in terms of e you will get therefore this i is equal to 2 pi epsilon naught into e into a into v you will get or v naught so now this is the current in terms of uh, electric field there so if we la lambda is given then directly you can answer this as our the current if electric field on the surface is given on the surface of conductor is given then we need to answer about this electric field there right so next let us see one more problem based on this uh, electrostatics combination of electrostatics and uh, current density so just i am taking this uh, this is spherical uh, conducting shell of radius uh, r it is connected uh, with another spherical shell of radius 2r and which are very far away from each other they are very far away from each other there is no influence of one on the other so initially both of them are given this uh, q and q so initial charges will be q only on both the uh, spheres so now at any instant of time we need to find current flowing through that right so let us write that two conducting spheres two conducting spheres of radii r and 2r of radii r and 2r are very far away from each other or very far away from each other and are connected by a wire having resistance r by a wire having resistance r if q is a charge given to the each sphere if q is the initial charge given to the each sphere then find expression for then find expression for current current flowing through the resistance at any instant of time t at any instant of time t right so that means those two are having same charge but the radius or different here so then initially we know that charge flows from high potential to low potential so it will be having some higher potential there when compared to that so charge is assumed to be flowing from this sphere to that sphere so right so here i am taking this charge present on this is at any instant i can consider it as q minus q where q is a charge flowing through this and a charge on this we can consider it as q plus q right and so now let us write the potential of the first sphere so potential of the first sphere i am writing here at any instant this is so first we'll write that assumption that let a small q let an amount of charge is small q is transferred from the sphere of radius r2 from this smaller sphere to bigger sphere from this smaller sphere to bigger sphere then at any instant of time t v1 potential of this sphere we can write as k of q minus q by r and potential of that sphere v2 we can write as k of q plus q by 2r right so we need to write the potential difference between them right so because that potential difference should be equal to ir according to our ohms law therefore now potential difference delta v is equal to 
v1 minus v2 is equal to I am writing like k into q minus q by r minus k into q plus q by 2r. So let us simplify this. Therefore, this delta v is equal to k by r you can take common then 2q minus uh, 2q minus q minus q by 2 you will get and so which is nothing but I can write this as uh, therefore this delta v is equal to the potential difference we can write as so k by 2r into this charge expression will be here 2q minus q q you will get and this will be 3q so you can write this as q minus 3q you will get right so that is a potential difference so by ohms law so by ohms law we can write as delta v is equal to ir we can write and so that i can write this as k by 2r into q minus 3q is equal to ir so now that i value now we need to write here that i value we need to write it as actually we need to find the current only but here directly you can't say i is equal to this value 1 by r of this value you can't say because this small q is a variable here so first we need to find the q value and then we need to find the current value right and so therefore this i can write this as k by 2 r into r q minus 3 q into this i value i am writing as dq by dt right so first we need to find an expression for the q and after that we need to find the charge expressions there. So from this I am writing this, uh, I am just rearranging the terms here. dq by dq by q minus 3q is equal to k by 2r into r into dt. Just we are rearranging the terms. This q terms I am writing this side and dq terms I am writing this side. Right. and this is from uh, 0 to t at any instant of time so this is nothing but I can write this as uh, minus 1 by 3 into ln q minus 3 q right and so limits will be from 0 to q and this is kt by 2 r into r you will get and just we need to further simplify this so I can simplify and this as minus 3 I am writing this side. So I can write this as ln q minus 3 q by q when you substitute the limits here. So then uh, instead of q minus q minus ln uh, 0 means ln minus ln q you will get. So that I am write, writing directly like this. This is minus 3 kt into 3 kt by 2 capital R into small r right. And so this we need to convert it into exponential form and then finally we need to write the expression for this small q here right and so that I can write this as uh, q minus 3 q is equal to q into e power minus 3 kt by 2 capital R into small r right and so therefore this uh, q is equal to small q is equal to or you can write this as 3q is equal to q of 1 minus e power minus 3 kt by 2 capital R into small r. Right? You can do the further calculation here. q is equal to q by 3 into 1 minus e power minus 3 kt by 2 capital R into small r. Right? And so that is the q expression there. So now our uh, question is about uh, how much current is flowing. So how much current is flowing means either you can substitute this q value here or you can again uh, find the dq by dt value from this. That is your choice. Either you can differentiate this as we know the q value. Now dq by dt is nothing but current, right? Or otherwise you can substitute this q value directly in this equation here. This is nothing but our current equation here. So you can directly substitute this 3q value from this equation here. So that you will get the current expressions there. So in both the ways you can find them. That is your choice. So will you differentiate or you will substitute there? 
So that means just I am substituting this value here as a 3q is there then 3q value I am substituting there therefore this is nothing but uh, k by 2r into r q minus 3q value I am substituting there therefore I can write this as uh, q of 1 minus e power minus 3 by 2 3kt by 2 capital R into small r and so that q term will be cancelled so k by 2 r into r into e power minus 3kt by 2 capital R into small r right this is totally e power so this is our uh, expression for the current here even if we differentiate you will get the same answer there even if we differentiate this equation we will get the same answer here. So that is our uh, current.